The difference between a novice and a master is that the master has failed more times than a novice has ever tried. Where did I hear this quote? Muhammad Ali? Dennis Ichikawa? Bruce Lee himself? Nope, I heard it from an anime. And while I've had many awesome fighting coaches in my life, there are some things that watching anime has taught me about combat as well. Lots of anime and cartoons have fight scenes in them, and while a lot of them are just over-the-top power moves, there are some artists and writers who try to incorporate combative knowledge. Unfortunately, David isn't a uh, hashtag super cool boy anime intellectual such as myself, <laughs> ladies. So I'll be the one to welcome you to five animes that I think have actual usable techniques. No, this is not a top five list. Those are stupid. And I also love them. This is better than a top five list. It's a regular list. Let's get started. First, we have a manga series. It's called Teppu. Teppu is about women's MMA, and if that already isn't awesome enough, every fight and move used in this manga, I'm willing to bet, was taken from a real match that the artist either saw or maybe was in. I just want to say I have mad respect for the author. I really appreciate how he used actual moves and techniques instead of making a stupid battle manga and then just slapping the title martial arts on it. Look, my manga, we use anime gloves and there's punching, so it must be mixed martial arts. <laughs> it's not as well known and it's a very short manga. Sure, just like Ippo, the visuals are exaggerated a little bit to capture the feel of it, but nothing in this manga is unrealistic in my eyes. Some matches end on their feet and never hit the ground. Other matches are entirely spent in guard and it shows the struggle of just keeping one position. Also, there's a panel where one character uses a knee to counter against a takedown attempt, something any fan of MMA knows is a devastating technique if timed correctly. Barboza or Romero, anyone? Plus, pitting the unrelenting genius against a disciplined hard worker is always a fun match to watch. If you haven't read this yet, I'd say do it. It's a quick 30 chapters and it's definitely a good read. So this next anime, let me be the first one to say, is not entirely realistic. It's called Kenichi, The Mightiest Disciple. Yeah, I know, don't unsubscribe. Kenichi is a series about a young boy who gets bullied, so he starts taking martial arts lessons and over time becomes stronger. Pretty standard. So first, let's take a look at the few fundamentals the show does get right. When I say fundamental, I mean small things like Koho and Haiho are just pivoting techniques to get your body offline. Doesn't make you disappear though. Or Kaoloi is just a grab and a knee strike. All very real and useful in fighting. The problem with Kenichi is that they exaggerate it so much that doing one of these techniques turns you into like Goku or something. I mean, at the end of season one, he's cutting people with his bare hands. Now on the flip side, Kenichi does have one of the coolest concepts that I've seen from an anime, and if you can understand it, it will really help your fighting. It's called the Seiku Ken. Seiku Ken is an imaginary, transparent bubble that you can visualize surrounding your opponent's body, and it represents their defense. Kenichi can't get into his opponent's Seiku Ken. When he tries, he gets blocked, but when he moves into the Seiku Ken, he gets hit. And it's only once he starts throwing certain moves he sees a hole open up in their bubble, and he has to hurry and strike through that hole before it closes up. That is actually really awesome. It shows that there is no such thing as a perfect defense. Every time you move or strike, you give up some of your guard. Really, this is a great way to conceptualize almost all elements of fighting, from footwork, finding an angle that puts openings in range, combinations, using one punch to alter your opponent's defensive position so your follow-up punches can target new openings, and feints, inviting your opponents to open up by blocking a strike that is never coming, and upper body movement, changing the position of your Seiku Ken to remain elusive. And as a fighter, you're going to have different guards and different ways to keep someone from hitting you, as well as the fact that your defense should be composed of your offense as well. A Seiku Ken isn't all blocking either. If you enter the Seiku Ken, you can get blocked, but also get hit. And that's a tough lesson in fighting you won't realize for a while. When someone comes into your range, you don't have to wait for them to attack, just hit them. And that is why Kenichi is on the list. But just barely. The next manga is called Holy Land, and it's about fighting. More specifically, street fighting. There are no rules. The story is about a boy who gets bullied a lot to the point of becoming a shut-in. He learns how to do a simple technique, a jab cross, and he accidentally KOs one of his bullies with it. From then, he learns that beating someone up is super effective against bullies and becomes a fighter. What's cool about it is that it's street fighting. It's so open to possibilities that nobody can predict what will happen next. You're not bound by the safety of the ring. One character, a judo practitioner, won a fight by simply throwing the guy on the ground and mentions that people don't think about how bad falling on the concrete hurts, especially if you don't know how to fall. And of course, the main technique the series focuses on is the jab cross. 
main character, Yu, has a very refined jab cross that he practices and strengthens by doing push-ups every day since he doesn't go to school. And his 1-2, the staple combination of boxing, becomes so fast and clean that it becomes really difficult for people to hit him. Sometimes all it takes is being an expert at a few fundamental basics to dominate, and also how sometimes one clean hit is all you need. However, once one of his opponents gets past his jab crossed, he doesn't know what to do and has to start building more skills. Don't be a one-trick pony. <coughs> Ronda Rousey. The only problem I have with the manga is that Yu does get really lucky in his first couple of fights, and he beats people who are way stronger than him, and his shots all land perfectly despite having no experience, but hey, I guess anything can happen on the streets, I guess. Alright, check this out. There's this really awesome boxing anime that no one's ever heard of ever. It's called Hajime no Ippo, and it uses real boxing moves. The what? Oh, David already talked about it? Oh, well, um, let's hear about it from a Japanese guy who can actually pronounce the Japanese name. This manga and anime has actual usable boxing knowledge in it. Things like, it's really hard to hit someone who has good head movement and uses it to set up counters, like the Dempsey Roll, or the Motionless Jab, a non-telegraphic arm punch that doesn't do much damage but gets there first and lets you set up more powerful strikes. Even the idea of putting Bloodlust into a feint. If you believe it yourself, then your opponent will believe it. Also the Frog Punch, a punch that David never covered because he thought it didn't exist. It's a punch where you squat down deep and then throw an uppercut. It was used by an actual fighter by the name of Koichi Wajima. In the anime, the character Aoki uses it to substitute his average fighting skills, as it helps him score more punches through sheer unpredictability. And while Wajima was actually a decent fighter, unpredictability was probably the only reason it worked in his fights as well. It's pretty much just a showboating move. But hey, a hit is a hit. Plus, I have used some of these techniques in my matches before, and for the most part, a lot of them worked. Much like Kenichi, the fights look a little bit over the top and anime-y, but it's much more subtle and captures more the idea and what it feels like to be in a boxing match. Getting hit by a punch feels this heavy on your physical and mental state. Every punch you throw seems like an ordeal when your stamina is running low in your 10th round. It really pulls you into the experience. And it's neat that it's centered around boxing, which isn't a super complicated fighting system at first, but can definitely become complex and strategic, contrary to street fighting where just anything goes. In many ways, the limits create new possibilities. And how that other anime doesn't capture at all. Kenichi definitely talks the talk, but Ippo definitely walks the walk. Uh, according to my calculations, this next anime isn't an anime? Yeah, but it's a really good show made in an anime style, so couldn't I... Well, I'm doing it anyways. Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, while this show did use real-world martial arts moves to build the bending styles, everyone hopefully knows that this show doesn't have actual martial arts technical application. It's impossible to use martial arts to bend the elements, guys. I'm the Avatar! What? Or is it? No, it's not. It's more like an appreciation for martial arts. From the circular moves of Bagua to the sturdy Hungar, they don't teach you martial arts, but it definitely captures the energy and form. What's impressive about Avatar is that it has the ability to capture complex martial arts wisdom and philosophy and frame it in a way that's easy for children to understand while still being incredibly entertaining to adults. Sometimes it explores simple problems, like the difficulty of learning a new style. Aang struggled with earthbending at first because his airbender roots got in the way too much. Relatable. I've been doing hard styles like Tongsudo and kickboxing for the past 12 years, but learning Kali this past year has been really difficult for me because all my basics go out the window. Other times, it explores things you might think would be too serious for a kid's show, like the nature of power and when it is or isn't necessary to use violence. That if you want to test a man's character, give him power. The benders use their power to fight off enemy terrorists and prevent natural disasters. Some people can heal using elements, others can... well... And it's a constant struggle for certain people in the show. There are times like when Katara has to decide whether or not to kill the man who murdered her mother in cold blood, or how Aang decides to defeat the Fire Lord without killing him. Even the way Zhang Zhang hates being a firebender, because he believes all it will bring is disaster, but ends up helping the White Lotus fight off the Fire Nation. Because you have to choose what you become, and when you have this awesome power, you can use it to help, you can use it to heal, or you can use it for your own personal gain. That's all for this video, and before you freak out that I didn't mention your beloved anime, here are some honorable mentions. Cowboy Bebop. It's interesting how Spike uses Jeet Kune Do as a style, with the artist taking movements and sequences directly from Bruce Lee movies. 
Karate Shokoshi Kohinata Minoru is a series to show how building fighting skills from pure, strong, clean basics of karate will really help you. Machida forever! Avatar The Legend of Korra. Uh, you're not gonna like this because the shift in fighting style. And Samurai Champloo. Seeing the contrast of the two samurais is so interesting. How Jin's discipline and fundamentals play off against Mugen's athleticism and unpredictability. If you'd like to see any of these broken down, let us know in the comments below. So, in conclusion, most of the time, anime might be a big gaudy fashion statement, but there are a few hidden gems out there that have good content. And that's the cool thing about martial arts, is that it's art. The series I just listed, in a weird way, is a form of martial arts because, like I said, your martial arts can be used for more than just punching and kicking. It can be shown and it can be inspiring. I mean, look at what David and I are doing on this channel, just sharing knowledge. Thanks for watching. I know the topic was a bit different today, but if you liked it and want to see me cover more medias like anime, check out the link below. This is Iman Rashid from The Modern Martial Artist, wishing you guys happy training.